Hello everybody. I don't know if I should be bending or standing. Can you see me? Or maybe I should just go backward a little bit. I just feel like you are all just down there and I'm looking and I don't like that. I like... Anyways, so it is now... I don't know if you'll be able to see. 9 o'clock. Let's just put it that way. 9 p.m. I thought I was going to make my dinner around 3 but because I had a couple of videos that I was busy with, one of them actually, let me just show you. I don't know if you'll be able to see. You see, it's just finishing right there on top. It's just finishing to upload. And uh, that's the video that's kind of like held me the longest time because if you have... Okay, let me put it this way. If you don't know me that well, hello, my name is Clancy's and I happen to like beauty pageants. And um, so since we are in the Miss Universe season, I am doing a lot of content around that on my new, new channel. Yeah, the one that is almost at a million views, like lifetime views. The one, yeah, the one that I started in August, <laughs> that one. <laughs> so... Uh, there are some things that are happening with me and LaRue and then I am updating and it's all good news. Don't worry. All good news. Uh, looks like she is going to place as high as the top five, if not the winner. So we're crossing our fingers on that one. So I was just doing a video just to rebut something that somebody said about former Miss South Africa. And I was like, okay, let's just prove them wrong. Because you know us South Africans. We don't explain ourselves, but we do educate you when you are ignorant. So, yeah, not to waste too much of your time. I am hungry. The last time I ate was breakfast. So, the sweeties that you guys saw and the snacks that you guys saw is for moments like this. I literally haven't eaten the entire day. I even have here something that I was, I made my own lunch. You know, when I work from home, I actually treat, mm, I must bet on you. I actually treat my content creation like I'm going to work. Because when I go to work, and I'm talking when I was employed, I used to carry lunch. So here's my lunch right here. I did not eat it. So what do I resort to? I resort to the snacks and the sweets and stuff like that. Sometimes just to give myself some energy. Right now, I'm going to cook my dinner. Remember these worms, these marshmallow worms? They're my fave. Mm hmm. Now I'm gonna cook my dinner. I'm just gonna mix spaghetti and minced meat. Mix it with pilchard tin stuff. Was it a fish? I know. I didn't know. Italians, go to bed. Don't look at what I'm doing because you're gonna have a heart attack. Please don't. Don't. Mm -mm. Anyways. Without wasting too much of your time, I hope you guys are doing well. How, how's been your day? It's Thursday today, the 31st. Happy Halloween! Those of you that celebrate Halloween, happy Halloween. Happy 31st of uh, October. We enter November tomorrow. Wow. Hmm. Let me quickly do that. Um, yeah, I'll leave you there. Please, whatever you do, buy these marshmallows. They're not sugary. I have a sweet tooth, so I wouldn't know the difference. Mm -mm, I would, I would. To me, it doesn't taste sweet. That's why. I, that's why I think they're not sweet. They're not worms. They're snakes. They are the ones with worms. They are worms and all kinds of creepy crawlies stuff that I don't like when they're alive. Let me start my dinner.
So at this point, maybe, wait, uh, look, yeah, I am. So at this point of my spaghetti, I remove it. I don't cook it all the way through because I'm still going to, you'll see the magic that I am going to create. So I'm going to remove it right now. It's still not fully cooked. It's just halfway there. A anyways, you'll see what I mean. I then take the same pot that I was um, cooking my spaghetti because it got oil in it. You know the whole oil thing, right? You don't know. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So my onions are nice and brown. I'm satisfied with the consistency. I just add tomatoes. Yeah, I don't peel my tomato skin. I dice them large. These are for those that are gonna be like, oh Francis, this, this and that. Let me tell you something about people's food, eh? Uh, when I was brought up, I was told never to make a comment about people's way of cooking, food they eat, as well as the way they eat. The only thing that I can do is to honor them by eating their food. It is rude to say no. It's also rude to make a comment unless the comment it is positive. So somebody's system of cooking that is something that they've learned from somebody they love so when you are making a comment and saying that hey you did this the wrong way you are basically saying whoever taught you how to cook taught you rubbish so same thing with you you didn't just grow up cooking somebody had to teach you show you the steps and how to cut etc and so on and uh and somebody comes and say oh this is nonsense you will take offense to that or somebody says you know it would have been better if or oh, maybe you should have added this hey next time do this hey 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 what what that is rude never ever ever do it when it comes to food culture language tradition customs including religion don't impose your own that you were taught by your favorite grandmother or whoever that taught you how to cook or whatever it is that you were taught growing up. Do not impose it on other people. The best that you can do for them is encourage them and encourage them in a positive way. If you feel like you want to add something, zibambe, hold it, swallow it, suck it up, it will go away. So I'm gonna put this turmeric that I got from Willy's. I love turmeric in my food. Not too much of it. Okay, let me just put it with 
this part. Why is it not opening? Did I do something wrong to you? Oh, there we go. Oh, it's new. I forgot. I have to open. I forgot it's new. Okay. I don't put too much. Kind of much. This much. I don't know. <laughs> and then, of course, time. I love time. I love the smell of thyme. Oops. I think I'm also gonna pour it this way because I want enough of it. And then This is my all-time favorite spice. This is rosemary. I love the smell of rosemary because it reminds me of boarding school in high school. And then when you walked into the kitchen, so as a prefect or a head boy, you can literally walk into the kitchen. Nobody's gonna ask questions. Sometimes I will go there to volunteer if I wanted to volunteer. All because I want to be immersed in the smell of rosemary. So then I like this Osman Taj Mahal curry powder. It's actually a masala. Alright, it's ginger and garlic. I like to put like a tablespoon because I'm hot like that. And then the last thing, or the second last thing I add is salt. And I add some water. I have learned that people don't know how to open a tin with a tin opener. Now, I would like to show you, maybe you already know, maybe you don't. This is a, I don't know how you use this. I've seen people doing it like that, which is absolutely wrong. How I learned it from my mother, how to open a pilchard or any other can for that matter that needs a tin opener. Let me show you how it's done. Okay, so you have your tin, right? And then you have your tin opener. So I've seen people do this when they open the tin. That is the wrong way of doing it, all right? The right way is to hold the tin opener like this. And on the left-hand side of the tin, you just open and then close and press, all right? And then, of course, you twist. And you will see how perfect the top would look. Okay, I did it too harshly. So basically this is how it even grips it. You see how clean the top is? All right, all you do is just release it. 
and then you oops woo. you see i told you guys i've got very very uh leaky hands anyways the point i'm making here is this is how see how clean it looks that i need to go wash this and then of course you put it okay you have to remove these see how clean all of that looks now i have to go clean the fish because you guys at one point you held me accountable for not cleaning my fish hey guys once upon a time when i was cleaning no i was not cleaning the fish because i don't clean my fish before now i do let me tell you something as i was busy eating i'm like okay what is it that i just chewed it was a beautiful diamond ring you could tell it was a wedding ring i don't know maybe it was of somebody they cremated over the ocean or it belonged to somebody who was proposing on a yacht and then it fell i don't know but like a 21 year old that i was and a broke guess what i did i took it to the pawn shop <laughs> i did but before i took it to the pawn shop i checked it how much was it worth it was worth a lot because i was able to live of it for three years as a student as well just to add on other stuff story time Okay, don't, don't worry about the color of my mint meat. That's because it's been in the deep freezer for a hot minute. I know you're not supposed to put mince meat in the deep freezer, but hey, who's looking? Hmm? Who is looking? The choice of living alone is that you break a lot of rules. I'm sorry that you are shaking up there. The surface is not that strong either. One of the joys of being a content creator is that you would be busy talking, 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 talking away, taking people through a process and uh, you discover later that your camera wasn't rolling. Not at all. All of that into the space and nobody is ever going to hear what is it that you were adding on your pot what process were you going through and why your pot looks the way it does and etc and so on i'm sorry i don't think i am if, even if i tried it, it's not gonna work out sorry it's just not gonna work out so i went through a whole pro i don't even know if i am recording this check Fortunately, I am. So yeah, now I have added my, of course, I don't know if you saw the mince meat part. I said it's been in, on the stove for 30 minutes and then I added my pilchard and I mixed both of them. And I said, I, nobody taught me this. I don't know where I got it from, but when I tried it the first time, I kind of like liked it. And then that's how it became my spaghetti it, it's not Italian. So Italian people, please don't come for me. It's okay. I'm an African. I owe my beings to the hills and the valleys, the rivers and the mountains. That, that, that's me. <laughs> uh, so sometimes we will improvise your national dish or your beneficity and create our own thing. Right. So that's what I did here. And uh, I'm threading bullets even though I've opened every single hole that I have in my house. I'm talking windows and doors. But still, I, I, I am sweating. And I think maybe because I'm also hungry. It is now, wow, 10 o'clock. 10 p.m., guys.
It is now 22.03. That is how it is. I'm having a video here that is doing so well. I should talk more about Mia LaRue, I see. I posted this video six hours ago and now it has 5,100 uh, views. And then I posted two hours later another one about Miss Universe. That is four hours ago. And uh, it's now at 618 views. And now the biggest shocker for me is the one that I just posted. Now you remember the one when I started this vlog I told you about? It is now at 500 and 13 views hi miss universe what are you doing to me because you're just a once-off thing once a year thing and i don't want to bring people on my channel that are going to be dead wood after the pageant uh -uh. And, and my subscriber count is also growing mm -hmm. I, I was at 3900 this morning now i'm at 3,945 All because I was talking about Miss Universe and Mia LaRue, Miss South Africa Man Clearly I'm going to be talking a lot about Miss Universe built going forward It's a money maker <laughs> Typical content creator thing to say <laughs> This is a perfect sound. This is a perfect. Oh my goodness! If you could smell my kitchen right now, you would want to come have dinner with me. I promise you. Then, of course, I have this um, thing in my. Ooh, what am I doing? Thing in my jig. Okay, guys. Earlier, when I was recording, and you guys did not hear me, I was saying I love when my spaghetti is nice and soggy like it's in a situation like this nice and soggy okay, let's taste the soft content because i feel like i put a little mm -hmm, i did put a little and the reason why i put a little is your fault guys because i did not want you guys to say ah what's our dog so much salt cleanses so I, I was a little bit shy even though it was not much and then remember remember this baby this is when I add the baby in here let it soak just a little bit longer I will kind of like cover it up so that it softens and then complete the cooking and then it marries everybody else that is in there because they are now in a polyamorous relationship all right so we'll take the one at the bottom Okay, maybe I should do it from the middle. So it's all softening up and they are marrying each other nicely. See this process, you have to be very extremely careful. Don't be too hasty. Don't you just love the color of turmeric, guys? It's my favorite color ever. I never thought in my life I would like the color yellow. So basically, I feel like my spaghetti is now well done. For my dinner, for that matter. It is, let's see. In most cases, you're just pinching here. Okay, just double. Okay. Yeah. 
it's ready because it's still going to continue to cook even when I am long done I can already tell it's going to taste worse on okay let's just cover it for 10 minutes it's a process guys it's a process Yes, I do put Nolan mayonnaise and of course South Africa's favorite aromat. Just put that just a bit. Just okay, it's new, so I don't know how to usually open when it's new. Uh, and I don't have nails. Okay, I think I see it. Ow! There we go. Just a small drizzle because we don't have cheese and I'm almost out not too much and this is my dinner but my dinner is not complete without of course Can somebody borrow me nails? And then of course, this is another South Africa's favorite. I like the pineapple flavor for me. The sweeter the better. <laughs> you know how you already feel my gosh. And of course, aqualess sparkling water, nice and chilled. It is a warm night. So you don't put all the way through, just stir a bit. Oh, look at how frizzy it is. Nice. And oh, it, it already feels and sounds refreshing. Thank you, Sis T. You're the one who gave me this idea. I would not in a million years, me, drink sparkling water. It just doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't. Okay, let the games begin. If you're wondering what I'm going to have for dessert, mm -hmm, that's my dessert tonight. Mm, this taste. Ah, oh, yes. 
will hit the right day. Thank you. All right, so let's have a chat before. Okay, I don't know. Let me put you somewhere here where we can see each other because this is a bit of a serious chat. So, guys, I keep telling y'all, can you please read the YouTube policies? Please read the YouTube policies. They are there for your own good as a content creator. They are not there to be a nuisance because you want to create the type of content you want to create. You know the one with your kids? Mm -hmm. Mm. <laughs> Man, I can cook. Thanks, mom. Mm. And the masala hits just correct. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Today I received about plus or minus six emails. Clearly there are people that watches my videos, but they don't comment. It's fine, I get it. Uh, if you see a video that seems to be helpful and valuable to your content, they you know click and watch. But clearly they don't watch my videos all the way through. And I think they have not come to a point where uh, they come across my videos where I talk about the YouTube policies, how important the YouTube policies are so that you do not lose your channel. And these people lost their channels. <clears throat> Without warning. Maybe they were warned because I believe they were warned. It's just that people think, oh, having a YouTube channel, it ends there. No, it does not end there. There is so many other things behind that you need to follow. Just like the policies. YouTube communicates with you via email. If there is something that YouTube feels that you have done and it just wants to give you a warning about, they will send you an email. And if you continue on what they just warned you about, they will send a final email. Maybe this time around that email is going to have a stronger language, meaning that threats, like if you do not one, two, three, then you will find yourself in this situation. Consider this a final warning. And you still don't read that email and then you do it the third time and boom, your, your channel is gone. So one of the things that the reason why these people's channels were deleted is because there was a YouTuber who's I don't know how new this person is. This is around the DoorDash era, as some of us call it. The DoorDash era, 40 plus year olds are starting YouTube channels. 40 year old YouTuber making $8,000. Uh, and uh, 42 year old YouTuber grew in a week to 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. And they are monetized and making money. And they say, oh my God, my first week of being monetized, I made $1,000. And everybody else is like, okay, okay, which is great because that's inspiration and you need to be inspired because that's the whole point of YouTube as well, is to inspire. That is what my channel is also about, is to inspire, is to light up that little spark of spark, turn it into a fire. And then who knows, this might actually be your full-time job and becoming your own boss. But there are rules, guys. There are rules and the rule is just go and read YouTube policies. And I remember these people because I remember seeing these YouTubers starting a group on YouTube, not a WhatsApp group or a Facebook group, but a group on YouTube calling all 40 plus year old content creators to subscribe to his channel and then when uh, they subscribe to the channel and everybody that comments under that 
uh, every video that he posts that the others must subscribe. That's sub for sub. It's against the YouTube policy. I'm sorry about that. It's against the YouTube policy. You can check it out. It's in the YouTube committee guidelines. Sub for sub is against YouTube law. It will get you you what's happening. It'll get your YouTube channel deleted by YouTube, sometimes without warning, because you are violating a fundamental policy or provision of the YouTube community guidelines. Just don't do it. The second person, which happens to be one of the six people, I died six people indeed. Their channel got deleted because they were showing their children. So they didn't understand what that meant. And I took them back to the YouTube policy on COPPA, C-O-P-P-A. And I will keep repeating this until people understand that back in the day, around 20, probably you would have gotten away in 2020. No, not 2020, 2019. Because I remember very well, around September 2020, the late CEO of YouTube created a video. It's there on YouTube. You can go there talks about copper how they are going to be implementing a new law on youtube which is going to be incorporated into the youtube policies where now you're going to have to mark your videos whether they are made for children or not made for children and if you mismark your video when you know very well that there are children involved and you marked it not made for children you will get sued by youtube forty eight thousand five hundred dollars so <sighs> Okay, I need to check this. Something's happening. All right, nothing uh, of emergency. So yeah, as I was saying, YouTube will sue you. Now I saw, I realized that YouTube doesn't sue anybody because I haven't heard since 2020 anybody being sued for showing their children on YouTube. Now let's, let me give a bit of a background. Back in the day before 2020, a lot of YouTube channels were family YouTube channels. These are parents, two people married to each other with several children quit the nine to fives and went on YouTube full time. You know why? Because they were making millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Why they were making millions of dollars? Because people seemingly enjoy family uh, vlogs. That's what they were doing. Family vlogs through and through, through and through. That is how they made their money. Then boom, in 2020, that announcement was made. Every family channel on YouTube disappeared because they did not want to get sued or lose their channels. As a matter of fact, they were advised that you can convert your channel into Kitty's uh, channel, right? But then you're not gonna make money because advertisers are not targeting children for adverts type of situation. They're looking for adults that are working with predictable income at the end of the month, and that is you. And that is why you're not supposed to show, show children in your vlogs, in your videos, on your thumbnails, etc., and so on. Because you may get away with it or you think you're getting away with it until the algorithm comes to your channel and be like, aha, what is this? So that is exactly what one of the people that wanted me to help them to get their channels back. I don't know why people think I have that ability, because I don't. I just. I just inspire people to start YouTube channels and grow their channels and make money. That's what I do. So I'm begging you. Oh yeah, the sub for sub one. Five people channel deleted. Why? Because of that group. And I knew because I saw that group. I wanted to say something because in the past I used to say something. I don't get ignored. If I don't get ignored, somebody would basically tell me to mind my own business. And then they channel channels do get deleted and suddenly now they're in my DMs. So see, I don't know. I, I was like, you know what? I'm no longer gonna say anything, but I will create videos like this and warn you, those that have ears will hear. Those that don't, well, child to your channel. Adios. So please, after watching this, please go sit down and read the YouTube policies and understand them. If you don't and you know a lawyer or you can afford a lawyer, 
go to the lawyer, sit down with the lawyer, consult with them, show them the YouTube policies. What do I need to understand here and what do I need to toss out? Is that difficult? So the excitement is great. I appreciate it. I enjoy watching everybody being so excited, but there are rules. And I also saw uh, this one currently. It is a, I don't want to say, it is a religious channel. And we know most of the time which religion that always boldly create channels and talk about their religion. There's nothing wrong with that. Where it becomes wrong is when you start judging Telling people what's wrong and what's not wrong and what Jesus says and what God said. That is where you are imposing now on people and also imposing your belief system. And YouTube does not like that. Ask T.D. Jakes what happened to his YouTube channel that had almost 50 million subscribers or something like that. Ask him. And many other pastors on YouTube, they don't have their channels no more. Why? Because at some point, this particular religion eventually becomes so bold and confident in opening judgmental types of scriptures and then start calling out people. Let me tell you something about vulnerable groups on YouTube that YouTube doesn't tolerate. You even talking about it. It doesn't even monetize such channels at all unless you improvise the words. The LGBTQIA community, <laughs> they don't even go there. You can open every scripture in the Bible, but at the end of the day, it's you who's gonna end up in tears. The other vulnerable group that YouTube considers is, yes, us, us. Even if you create a reaction video, and maybe the video is borderline criticism, borderline praise, but YouTube will go for the criticism and will deem it as bullying. Sometimes the R word. So what I'm trying to say here, if you are not, stay away from making commentary about because the channel is gonna get deleted. Why? Because considered as vulnerable groups on YouTube. Of course, the obvious one, copper, children, vulnerable groups, people that live with disability, vulnerable groups, people that, uh, I don't know, uh, you know the stuff, the new stuff that is happening. Just don't touch on it, don't talk about it. If your religion is to encourage people about salvation, focus on those only. Leave those that are not in that bubble because you're going to get to YouTube channel deleted. I don't know if I'm understood. Just don't. So there's a channel that is deleted, I believe, on YouTube. If it's not suspended for seven days, it is deleted. Simply because it was making commentary about Dodash. And I remember thinking to myself, this is, this is, um, what's her name again? That black girl who blew up in a week to a million subscribers and every YouTuber started scrutinizing her. And people that are not, were going up overboard, calling her a YouTube bot and uh, YouTube employee. Uh, there was another word they were using. I can't remember what that word was. You remember Aliana, Aliana, Aliana something. What? Aliana something. I will, Aliana, she's the van girl. She used to have a snake, a white snake. And she did, she lived a van life style. That girl blew to 1 million subscribers in a week when she started. And there were so many criticism around her and YouTube deleted people's channels. Why? Because Either they forgot that you don't talk and criticize. I, I don't know. So when I saw this about DoDash, I was like, ah, oh, bro, goodbye to your channel. And I know he's not saying anything negative. He did make criticisms, pointing out things like, this momentum is going to die at some point. You do not tell a person that all of this enjoy while it lasts. 
You know, don't. Just leave it alone. If somebody's blowing up on you to celebrate them. But don't make commentary that is borderline criticism. Especially when you are not. Because we are considered vulnerable groups for some reason. Just be careful. But my most one that is concerning me is copper. I know guys you love your bundle of joys to be on your videos but your bundles of joys will get your channels deleted. Of course it's not them who's going to say hey delete that channel. No. It's policies guys. Please. Anyways guys let me go have my dinner and uh, continue with my content creation. I'm now going to be creating videos for December. Uh, because December is quite busy here in South Africa, what am I going to do? I'm going to create one video for each day in December. So 31 videos that I'm going to be creating and scheduling so that I do not have to um, skip an upload in December. Not even once. I don't want to do that. Even though I will be busy doing December stuff. I don't know if you know, in South Africa, we don't have a December. We have a vibe. So, I might be part of that vibe. <laughs> There'll be no time to be creating videos, if you know what I mean. So, batch filming is my best friend. Love it. And that is what I'm going to be doing after my dinner. See you guys later. Thank you so much for following my cooking vlog today. I very much appreciate the support that you give me. I will see you next time with a new vlog. Goodbye.